Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Long to Thursday Night Grand Am. Live exclusive broadcast brought to you by Track Racer, Thrustmaster, and V8 Online Superstore coming to you soon. I'm Matthew Hill, your host, and joining me again is Scotty Griffith. G'day, Scotty. Hey, I'm ready. How are you tonight? Oh, mate, loving it as for usual. Thursday night, Grand Am, getting super excited. And a bit of, a bit of sad news for any Twitch fans. Tonight's our last broadcast on the actual service. Next week, we're switching across to uh, YouTube. Yeah, I feel privileged and a little bit sad that our last broadcast on Twist uh, on Twitch. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we'll forever go down as the last commentators on the on the Twitch program for V8 Online. So that's a record that probably never can be taken away from us. No, we'll see how we can mess it up. <laughs> well, last week we saw some great racing at um, Circuit de Gilles and we had uh, Jorn Jens taking the win from Matthew Barron and Steve Vonus in the Daytona prototypes and in the McLarens we had Dylan Sharman leading, uh, sorry, winning quite comfortably after Brake Coppo and Jonathan Cellini. So uh, we're here at round five at Mossport Park. Really looking forward to this one. So we'll run through the championships just quickly. We've got Steve Onus leading the charge in the DPs with 586 points and nipping at his heels now is Anthony Kernich on 561 and Alex Lamb who actually didn't race last round on 556. Christopher Green in fourth. We got Jason Brimcombe in fifth. Matthew Barron in sixth. Christopher Osborne in seventh. Michael Shayer in eighth. Cameron Constable in ninth. And Sven Hunter rounding out the top ten in the Riley Daytona prototypes. Yeah, in the McLarens, we've got uh, Blake Coppo out to a nice little lead now on 785 points from Andrew Lee on 633. David Hingston, 475. David Arnold, 467. Jonathan Solani, 431. Wayne C. C. Burke, Dylan Sharman, Andrew Wren, Warren Spack, and Leo Gray. Well, this is looking like an incredibly tight little championship now in the Riley Daytona prototypes. Um, and we've actually got a couple of the the old the old crew, I'd suppose you'd call them, from, from last season. We've got uh, Jonathan em John Emerson back again. Uh, racing tonight, which should be uh, a lot of fun. I mean, he's definitely a front runner and is keen to get on the pace. Yeah, Emma is definitely the uh, was, has the pace setter. Every time he gets into the DP, be interesting how he goes tonight after a few weeks off from it. Yeah, that's right. The cheeky bug is fast, no matter what you put in him. And so uh, it'd be interesting to see how he goes tonight. That's for sure. Um, tonight we're racing at Mosport for round five. Absolutely love this track. The up and down and the um, the the accuracy you needed for Moss Corn to get a great run on Mario Andretti straight away at the back, and the S is so fast and so flowing. It's it's um it's such a fun track to race. I mean, if I wasn't in the com box, mate, I would be out there on the track for sure. Yeah, I mean, I have had a skid last night in the trucks, and even in the trucks, it was fantastic fun to, to get around. I actually learned a few things that I, I um can put through forward to other cars in it. Yeah, the trucks are a really tricky little car to drive. I mean, they're really designed to go left, and to make them go right is a is a real work of art. So um, we saw a, a lot of high action yesterday in the in the broadcast of the uh, of the truck series. So yeah, that was great to watch. Very much enjoyed it, and the boys did a great job. And good to see you out there as well, Scotty. Having a run? Yeah, I was very surprised I made the top split, and it's good. 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 Uh, I had a good little night. <laughs> Always good to see your name in lights there. All right, so heading along now to uh, the race preview. We've got a 45-minute race tonight. Um, we'll go through the little track summary first of all. We're um, in Mossport in Canada at the, was it the Canadian Tire Sport? <laughs> Done it again. Tire Motorsport Park. We've got uh, the track length is 3.9 kilometres, 10 turns. Uh, the DP estimates about 39 laps and the GT3 is as per usual about three laps behind. Um, fun, fun track. I cannot under, I cannot overemphasize how much fun this is to ride. I mean, you go through turn one, you've got plenty of camber. There's a, a nice little short straightaway before you, almost like you just dive off the end of the planet. You're heading into turn two, blind left hand, a double apex, and I can only imagine what would feel like in real life. So. Uh, tonight's race, 55% humidity, 26 degrees temperature, um, strength in the DPs, 
3,349, which is down a little bit from last week. And in the GT3s, 3468, so very, very strong field in the uh, Daytona prototypes. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be a little battle tonight. Looking forward to it. Just waiting for my uh, overlay to come up. Uh, shouldn't be too long now. I'm just waiting for my uh, my little game to launch, so hopefully we won't be too far away. The joys of modern technology, eh? We've uh, just experiencing a couple little difficulties here at the moment, but um, shouldn't be too far away at all. Well, uh, next week, guys, we're heading off to uh, YouTube. So Monday night will be the actual first um, broadcast in the V8s at uh, Interlagos for round five. And uh, so anyone who wants to watch us in the future will have to go over to YouTube and the address for our website over there, our little live stream is is um, www.youtube.com forward slash V8s online. And uh, you'll be able to catch all the action live from 7.30. Also, please head over to Facebook. Check out our um, little page there. They'll keep you constant updates on what's going on. Um, and we do run the, the three uh, different series over there. So really looking forward to that one. Guys on track now doing their warm-up. Only a couple of seconds to, uh, to go before we start to grid up. This is the, the moment where we all get a bit... The hands get a bit sweaty, the, the shoulders sort of get a bit tight, well you've got to try and stay loose, so the experienced guys will know exactly how to do it. Just getting the, uh, the grid ready for you now, guys. You run through the DPs, we've got um, Christopher Osborne taking pole. First time we've seen him back since round three, I believe. Uh, John Emerson in second place. Steve Vanus in third. Dale Nish in fourth. Good to see Nishi out here having a run the DP. Ian Ford as well. We did see him have quite a good race there on Monday night in the V8s. Uh, Christopher Green, Michael Shear, Carl Watmore and Alex Dwarak in the ninth place position. It's uh, good to see yeah. nine drivers turn up for this. So yeah, really, really good forward. Looking forward to this and really close to the front. Yeah, good little battle. Hopefully, uh, and the McLarens we've got Dylan Sharman from Fabio Gonzalez, Mitchell Abrahor, Andrew Lee, Tony Altridge, Bruce Joy, Jonathan Solani, David Hingston, David Arnold, Paulo Martins, and Owen Page. We've got Benjamin Allen, Manu Haluki. Warren Svack and Daniel Pelzer. Some tricky names in there, guys. Remember, if we do butcher your name, please head on over to facebook.com um, forward slash VATS online and phonetically spell the name so we uh, don't mess it up for like next time because it'll, I mean, we're true blue Aussies and, and uh, yeah, we <laughs> tend to mess up a lot of the foreign names from time to time. So uh, the car's now heading off yeah, on, their, on their practice lap, yeah, on their warm up lap on their pace lap. Yeah, they got a full lap around here to get everything going. That's right. You'll see that the actual, uh, the DPs tend to break away from the McLarens. The McLaren guys give them a bit of space because the, the last thing that the leading McLarens want to get involved with is a little bit of mistake maybe from the, um, from the DP. So it gives them plenty of time to react, gives them a nice little space and uh, they can concentrate on their own race because in Grand Am, multi-class racing, get a uh, serious bang for your buck with two races in one. I mean, it's such a beautiful track. I mean, this is so much fun to get around. So these guys would be focusing now. They'd be getting in the zone um, and they'd be double guessing themselves, hoping to God that they've lighted the correct setup as I normally do on a pace lap. Yeah, yeah I was wondering the other night how I made sure I had enough fuel in the car. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, one thing to fall, fall short for a lap or two. It's um, not the greatest feeling in the world. No, 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 trying to itch it out, me itch it out. 
the uh, DPEX uh, now uh, heading up Murray Andretti straight away. Yeah, got a little care of the McLarens. Definitely. We've got some debuts now in the top splits. Good to see the uh, the newbies represented in the top splits. So welcome along, guys, and, and hope you enjoy the broadcast if you watch this later. And uh, we got Benjamin Al actually starting in the pit lane, so that'll be interesting to see what his little plan is for the race. I mean, this is 45 minutes, and it will be pretty much a sprint to the checkered flag. There'll be no pit stops involved tonight, unless, of course, you, you touch the wall, touch the grass, or crash into someone else. So the Mustang now just giving a bit of a break on Christopher Osborne. Christopher Osborne rounds the last corner. The green flag drops and we're away. Looks like Steve Anus has got the jump on John Emerson up the inside. So Steve Anus will probably slot into second place unless John Emerson fights. No, he thinks better of it. And forward Back. following Dale Neesh as well. Looks like we've got Christopher Green off at turn one. Only slight contact. Back in the McLaren. Back in the McLaren. Shout oh. out Huge accident. Tony Ortrich involved. David Hingston involved. David Arnold involved. Huge crash at turn one. Not the greatest start for McLaren's. And we'll try and get a replay of that one there. But it looks like Andrew Lee and uh, oh, Fabio Gonzalez, the season campaign, is the two guys. Andrew Lee is actually fighting for the championship in the McLaren. And not a great start to this race for those two guys. Yeah, Andrew Lee just sort of touched the back of no. Gonzalez crossing the start line and, and unfortunately that's uh, huge damage now for, for several guys involved. Oh, what a mess in the it's McLarens. Just, there's cars everywhere. Wow, that's really that, split that, the McLarens up. Yeah, wow. Sharma's got a huge lead. Yeah, he'll be thankful that that'll happen behind him, but... Uh, as we look now, back through the field now, it's quite evenly spaced. We've got Paul Martins all over the back of Jonathan Cellini. Nice little battle there for, uh, where are these guys battling? For 11th to 12th, I think, in class? Oh, sorry, 4th and 5th. And what? what? Yeah, wow. Carlos jumped right up on the start. Good look. Oh, looks like we've got a... Christopher Green off at, the, at turn two. He's not having a good run at the moment at all. It looks like he's just gone straight off at turn two. Let's see if we can get a replay up. The race call replay up on the screen now for you guys. Looks like uh, he's yeah, just trying to overtake by the McLarens. Misjudged the turn and went straight off at turn two. And was very, very lucky just to keep it off the wall. So... Well done to Christopher Green on on the on a little bit of a uh, incident there. As now we go back to the the front runners and the DPs. We've got uh, Christopher Osborne leading quite comfortably over Venus. And when I say comfortably, we're talking about 0.6 of a second as the last time they crossed the check at the the start and finish straight. Steve Venus in second, uh, leading John Emerson, and John Emerson will not want to sit behind Steve Venus for too much longer. No, he's got not. He's pulling in that little gap. I was, I was reading earlier that a couple of guys struggling trying to get a good balance with the DPs around here. Yeah, this is this is one of those tracks, isn't it? I mean, you've got to have tremendous straight line speed, but you've also got to have the downforce and the grip through the corners. Otherwise, you'll lose those final te the tenths of a second, and uh, before you know it, you'll be running down the back of the field. So these guys are running a very balanced setup here. I know one of, I know uh, my teammate John Emerson uh, running around in, in the uh, TCL DP actually made the comparison that um, messing around with these setups just before the race is uh, like uh, like cooking on MasterChef. So you'll be glad to hear that that one belted out. He made that analogy. I mean, these things you get so familiar with them, and when you play with something just before that green flag drops, I mean, you have no idea what you're playing around with. So um, these guys will be have run plenty of practice wraps to make sure that they've got the wing settings right, the suspension right, and everything nice and comfortable. 
in the onboard room. John Anderson here, looking right out the look of Steve Venus. Damn, they drove in deep going through there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, they, um, these, these front runners, they're definitely committed. Looks like um, Steve Venus actually put a little bit of back on uh, Christopher Osborne through the Moss there, so tighter than it, than it was before. Gap down to 0.4 of a second, so um, yeah, definitely pulled in a couple of tenths of a second there. Yeah, but Emerson pushing both of them up, up back to the front of the field. Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, John Emerson will definitely keep Steve Ono's honest here, that's for sure. Heading back now into the uh, the GT3 McLaren class, we've got Bruce, Bruce Joy leading um, Manu and also Warwick Spack in the uh, GT3 cars. These guys are quite evenly spaced. A yeah, nice little battle, they're pretty close to the lap time. Yeah, that's right, these guys will just be wanting to set a little bit of rhythm and, and hoping that, um, that the work that they look after the tyres now will, will pay dividends when the, uh, the checker flag drops. Oh, Manu runs a bit wide there. Battle up front. The third in the McLarens, heating, heating up. Solani and Mitchell. Oh, sorry. We got Paulo Martins now catching Jonathan Solani. In very similar looking cars. Be hard to uh, commentate as nightmare having to separate those two. Yeah, but, have, uh, to have a John... second look on the wrong car. <laughs> Looks like um, that first lap incident actually just as the green flag dropped for the McLarens, it looked like um, we've dropped three of them now. We've got, uh, who is it, uh, Fabio Gonzalez now down three laps, looked like he's DNF to Andrew Lee as well and Tony Ortrich, so three heavyweights in the GT3 all come to a, an abrupt end there at, at, uh, before even turn one. So uh, unlucky for those guys, they'll, I'm sure they'll come back next week and uh, be, looking, be looking for a solid result. Yeah, Fabio and Andrew Lee do need a bit of touch with the good luck for him. They've not had, not had a good uh, good run over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. I mean, they'll be um, they'll be thinking they've gone up on the wrong side of the bed, or they've they've had a black crass, a black hat um, cross in front of them. But Ian Ford looks like he's had a bit of an accident or a bit of an incident. Oh, huge! He's hit the wall in a massive way. That's um, not what we want to see at all from Ian Ford. I mean, he had such a good performance in the in the V8, and to see him, oh man, that's a huge hit. Looks like he's um, outbreaked himself going into Moss, and that's a huge accident. What makes him to suffer a hit like that? He's just uh, just uh, lost the rear, stepped out of him a bit, and um, had nowhere to go but the wall. It was a passenger. Yeah, just entered too fast and stuck, and unfortunately that's race over for Ian Ford. So we've got Jonathan, sorry, John Emerson now all over the back of Steve Onus. Emerson really making a nuisance of himself, but um, I tell you what, Emerson has got a real fight in his hands because we know how good Steve is on the brakes. Whoa, real loose. That was very loose. Wow. <laughs> These guys are absolutely on the limit of adhesion. It's good to see how much these guys um, know the boundaries of the cars and they're prepared to push at such an early stage. But that little moment there from Emerson actually gave um, Steve Vanus a little bit of a break. And uh, Gap slipped out to about half a second, but I'm sure Emerson will... will Reel that back in shortly, and uh, he's all over the back of him again at turn one. It's time ticking away. He's trying to just find a way past Phoenix and see if he can get after Osborne. Well, now um, that Venus has sort of dropped to about 2.6 seconds now behind uh, Christopher Osborne. He is yeah, actually the, the traffic now coming into play now. So that that gap now dropped down to two seconds, but. Uh, Emerson will not want Osborne to get away at all at the front and um, really, really make it easy for himself. So 
John Emerson really wants to make a move now on Steve Amos and is looking very, very threatening. Look, we've got a uh, little battle pack going on in now in the uh, GT3 cars. We've got David Hingston and Manu in, in a red hot battle now. And who's that in the background I see there? We've got Warwick's back in as well. So we've got a, an excellent battle now for 6, 7, 8 now in class. Yeah, once again, the McLaren's putting on a good little show for us. Uh, and we appreciate it too, boys. We really do. One thing I can't get over is it's actually when you when you look at these McLarens as they enter the corners, the, the back really sort of steps out on them. It uh, really takes a lot of skill to be able to manhandle these things around, that's for sure. Yeah, the um, car feels like a lot of front end grip, grip at the moment. These guys are really want to be looking after their tyres though, that's for sure. Yeah, about 34. Looks like uh, Bruce Joyce caught up the back of uh, Paul Martins and Jonathan Solani. Looking to make it a, an interesting battle for uh, third, fourth, fifth. But as per usual, Dylan Charman has absolutely pulled out to a, um, a monster lead already. I mean, he has pulled 5.1 seconds out on Mitch Abrahol, and we know that Mitch Abrahol is no slouch at all. As I say that, Mitch Abrahol puts a couple of wheels there on the dirt, but manages to get away with that one. But, uh, yeah, Dylan Charman in a commanding position very, very early in this motor race. Only 10 minutes in, or about 11 minutes in now. And, um, yeah, commanding five and a half second lead. He got an awesome jump at the start of the race. With all, all the Fabio and Andrew Lee getting together, he kind of got a big gap on the field. I oh, know. Uh, Dylan is um, counting his lucky stars, that's for sure. I mean, for that sort of accident to happen right behind him and, and give him a bit of a jump on the, on the field is exactly what you... You, you, what you do want from uh, your race, but also you don't as well. You, you hate to see other people crash out. And uh, Mitch Abrol has also managed to put a bit of a gap on Jonathan Salini for, um, for third place. Now the gap out to 5.9 seconds. And now back to the DP class. The battle for second is really still on. Steve Anus has not let John Emerson get past at all and being able to help that uh, the TTL driver at bay. You're making that DP as wide as he can. They're coming up to uh, Bruce Joy by the looks of it to put a lap on him in the McLaren. This is this is where it gets interesting as a multi-class racing. Um, I mean the GT3 cars are so oh accident oh, huge Bruce no. John Emerson unfortunately nowhere to go and hit the back of Steve Anus and that's massive damage to Steve Anus. So unfortunately the McLaren just in the middle of the road and the, the DP cars had nowhere to go. So very, very unfortunate. So the race call replay now up on screen and yeah, we've just caught the tail end of that where um, unfortunately for, uh, for John Emerson had nowhere to go at all. Yeah, Vanus closed right up um, Bruce in that McLaren and absolutely had nowhere to go. Yeah, Emerson now is going to have huge damage, as clearly obvious as well as Steve Anus' car is very, very second hand. It looks like Vanus has pulled the pin, his uh, car's too, got too much damage there, so. John Emerson heads into the pits as well. I think this may be a race over as well for Emerson. Not the return that Emerson really wanted at all, but um, I tell you who. Who? Man taking, taking who the is, advantage. They are was, Nice jumpers up to second. I know, what a debut for Nishi. Welcome aboard, mate. Up into uh, second place in DP, so well done, Nishi. And uh, I tell you who's really benefited this is Christopher Osborne. Out to a massive lead now. Close to eight seconds now. Yeah, Michael Schreier moving up 
third from uh, Cal Watmore. Yeah, Cal Watmore now. Um, great turn of speed. Really showing it how to how to do it. Um, it's good to see Cal out here enjoying the DP in more sport. I mean, this is a, this is definitely a driver's track, so you'll see a lot of names near you don't normally see. So welcome along, Cal, and I hope you enjoy the race. And uh, he's not too fine, too far behind Michael Shea at all. You can see the back now of um, of Michael Shea. I mean, as a, as a race driver, that just gives you the incentive to chase that a little bit harder. You get that grit between the teeth and stop that pedal a little bit harder. Yeah, he'll be absolutely ragging everything he can out of that um, hyper stimulator. Hyper simulator, sorry, the uh, DP. Both drivers approaching some lap traffic in some of the McLarens. Yeah, as we saw before, anything can happen once you once you once you catch these GT3 cars. A little bit of driver etiquette needed in some cases, but um, to most part, the, the guys are actually keep an eye on the mirror. They they keep an eye on their relatively splits, splits, and they know exactly who's coming up behind them. Yeah, the, um, most of them get the uh, DP is a good break. But the closing rate here is quite fast, as we saw in the early incident. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, the GT3 car is a little bit slower through the turns, and they're uh, obviously don't have it quite. They have about the same amount of horsepower as the uh, Daytona prototypes, but obviously they're a much heavier car than the, the full carbon body on the um, Daytona prototypes. So obviously the power rate to ratio, the the, the acceleration on the DPs are a lot greater. But the funny thing is, these um, McLarens run like a uh, carbon disc in the, in the brakes, so their braking power is actually a, a touch better than the Daytona prototype, so it makes for some very interesting moments coming in the corners. Yeah, you can jump on the brakes in McLaren, <laughs> you clear break, you break yourself trying to give the DPs the braking in uh, some of the bigger braking areas. Yeah, that's right, and they've also got the benefit of the ABS as well. Very tricky system to use though, to get it to get it in that sweet spot is very, very hard to do. Yeah, it's, uh, it's still, I'm still trying to learn uh, the braking cap capabilities of McLaren. Oh uh, yeah, unfortunately it's not something you can step into and just master straight away. McLaren's now getting a bit split up now with the, with the as the faster DPs go past now. These guys will want to be settling into a rhythm, I mean, that can really upset you as the faster cars just blow past you down the straight. It's important to try and ignore those cars as they go past you. It's very important not to ignore them as you, uh, as you, um, as they come up on you though, you got to pay attention. It looks like Emerson's uh, made some repair and a couple of laps down, but back out on track. Yes, yeah, still carrying a huge amount of damage on the front left of that uh, DP. See what top, see what top, top, of, top of lap time you can do with that. How much damage going? Unfortunately, um, two laps down and only 27 minutes remaining. It's uh, unfortunately he's not going to be uh, make a difference too much in the uh, the results in the race. Looks like we have a quite a quite a big retirement. I mean, we did see it um, circuit de Chauvinerve last week. We we only had one or two retirements there for the whole race and. This week, within 20 minutes, we've had um, just nearly six cars drop out. So, huge attrition rate here at Mossport. Yeah, a couple of the master guys definitely uh, uh, suffered some bad luck and out early in the, in the oh, race. Oh, we've got a huge accident. Sorry, we've got. Um, sorry to interrupt, but we've got Paulo Martins in the wall at turn two. Huge accident. Big damage to the front of that McLaren. 
as we get the re the race recall replay up on screen now. Oh wow, he's got. He looks like he slowed to maybe to let one of the DPs through, and the DPs got on the grass, come straight across the track, and unfortunately, Paul Martin's nowhere bit, to go. Oh, a bit of net code there by the looks of it. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, part of sim racing, I'm afraid, bit of a net code there. Paul Martin's definitely the victim on that case. Trying to do the right thing and let yeah. the DP go, and huge accident. Busy like window. Alex, Alex Dwork, Dwork as well is actually carrying a lot of damage as well, so we can see if he pops in the pits after this lap as well. Uh, he's continuing on by the looks of it, so... A little bit of damage. Yeah, unfortunately, he stuck a couple of wheels in the grass and came screaming across the track. And uh, unfortunately for Paul O'Mahon, there's nowhere to go. Unfortunate. Hankston still continuing now on the back of Bruce Joy. Both those drivers moved up through the field quite nicely. Head now as one of, the, um, one of my favourite graphics on screen now is the uh, the winners and losers, or the gains, net gains and net losses. We've got uh, Dan Leach obviously benefiting from Emerson and uh, Vane is, is crashed there in the, uh, the midsection of the race there, up two spots, Michael Shard up four, so great result. And also likewise for Carl Watmore, Christopher Green up one and uh, Axel up three. And uh, obviously we've got uh, Steve, uh, sorry, John Emerson down five, still circulating. May News down five, and Ian Ford down four. So all cars still out on track, but uh, carrying a lot of damage. All right, yeah, uh, the T threes. We've got Dylan at the head of the field from uh, Mitch. Mitch at one spot. Jonathan, Jonathan Talani up four. Bruce Joy up two. Hingston up three, Menu up six, big big jump for him. Uh, David Arnold two, Benjamin Allen three, Daniel five, Warren Warwick is back three, and uh, our retirees are put in put Paolo down one, Fabio down ten, Andrew Lee nine, and Tony Altridge nine. The um, the championship now is going to look, at the end of this round, is going to look completely different. One to keep an eye out on Facebook for our um, updates um, is, yeah, it's really going to throw a spanner in the works. Absolutely. Steve Anus now, huge damage. He's actually our leader in the uh, Daytona Riley prototypes. Um, and uh, Christopher Osborne leading the charge, and he's a uh, fair way behind, but hoping to catch up. Yeah, I mean, Alex Lamb also out again this week that's going to give a... Uh, uh, is it, yeah, still, still with some pedal issues. It's going to give. Um, is it Osborne will be jumping the field? Yeah, Osborne will be definitely trying to rake back in that deficit. He'll absolutely be pushing, pushing the limits on that uh, bitch racing DP. Looks like we've got um, Cal Watmore in the Trans Tasman Racing Riley product. And the multi twenty one racing prototype coming up to the back now of um, one of the GT three cars. Is that Bruce Joy? Or no, Dylan actually, laughing the leader of the, the GT threes. Yep, Dylan gives him plenty of space and was fortunate enough to get uh, caught by the two cars in the in the straight there. So very lucky for for Dylan. But um, Carl now pressuring the back of Michael and, and hoping to put Michael in a bit of a mistake. As we see now there, the, the gains in the last five laps there, we've seen uh, quite a good result there for, for Carl. We're actually reeling in Michael, but um, Michael last lap round pulled out two tenths of a second on Carl. Yeah, they're very, very tight in what well, looks at the lap times. These guys um, have been separated by less than a second the whole race. Oh, it looks like we've had Cal 
actually turn it around at the coming out of Moss Corner. Just uh, looks like getting on the gas too early to get try and get the drive there. And just as we give Cal a bit of a wrap, he he um, unfortunately uh, loops it around there coming out of Moss. So as we get the uh, the race recall replay up on screen now, just a, looks like he may have just got a little bit of curb in the first corner there, and just enough to unsettle him coming into the second part of Moss. Yeah, just just trying to catch that room, that little little bit of space there, and uh, forcing pays a penalty by just pushing a fraction too hard. Giving Shrey a break. Yeah, that's right. Giving Dylan Charman a little bit of a scare as well with the, the leader of the McLaren. Yeah, come on, guys. I'm going to give you a good break. What are you doing <laughs> to me? Dylan Charman absolutely dominating field again at 11.7 seconds gap this time. Last time by what the gap was 11.7 seconds. That little spin there in front of Cal Watmore. Would have, uh, would have slowed Dylan down just a little bit coming on the back straight there. Mitch, Mitch. Mitch Abrahol now um, on screen there. Putting in a pretty decent performance there for his... Um, First run in the McLaren. First one I've seen him in the McLaren anyway for for quite a while. A few a few races at least. Done, I think he's done a few other rounds this season. Good to see him out there having a good show of it. Um, currently running in uh, second place. Yeah, so I, the, I, I, 8.3 second lead in front of Solani. Yeah, the, uh, the first three guys have, um, in the uh, McLarens pretty much having it their own way. Jonathan Solani in a bit of a battle though. That's We've got uh, Bruce Joy and David Hingston. Continuing their yeah. battle there now, heading through uh, turn two. David Hingston would have the bit between his teeth. He'll be really pushing hard. Pushing that lazy man racing McLaren GT3 towards absolute limit, trying to catch down Bruce Joy. The leader, leader of that DP is uh, approaching them both to lap them. And we'll see if uh, Hingston can make any ground on Bruce while that goes on. Yeah, Chris Osborne there knowing that probably the best place to tackle these guys would be on the straight. So just hanging back a little bit through Moss. So smart driving there from uh, Christopher Osborne. He'll be wanting to clear um, Bruce Joy though, heading into the far section. Bruce sees him coming, gives him plenty of room, and and that's how it's done, boys. Great driving there from the two different classes. I still can't get over how hard that Christopher Osborne can go into those that double right-hander at the end of the straight there. He's pushing very, very hard. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Mitch Abrol, around. They've got the race recall replay up on screen now. He's uh, looks like he's coming out of second last corner. Got a little bit sideways, touched the grass, and around he goes. And does he keep it off the wall? Unfortunately, not. No, he's he's just touched it, but uh, be very very minor damage on that McLaren. So he'll be able to continue going and. Lost his spot there to uh, yeah. Jonathan Solani. So, Solani's uh, taken his, that position, moving him up to second. Yeah, with 15, well, 16 and a half minutes left on the clock now, these guys will be um, make it very interesting now, coming into the last uh, couple of minutes of the race anyway. Yeah, Bruce Joy, not that far behind Mitch now after that spin. Bruce Joy can see him up the straight now as well. When you are racing around these uh, the circuits and you can just see the guy in front of you, mate, it's, it's just like ray, uh, like waving a red flag to the wall. I mean, they just um, just get a bit between their teeth, so to speak, and just and drive the wheels off these things. 
Yeah, it's not hard to um, overcook it here. The, the, the curves here can, can be quite, quite nasty with the, on the McLaren. Yeah, these cars are really, really tightly sprung, so, I mean, the slightest bump, if you're not expecting it, could, could quite, quickly, quite quickly turn the car around by unsettling it. Yeah, they, uh, as a, you know, uh, once again, the fuel load burning off them made the car a little bit lighter and more susceptible to the bumps. One guy we haven't uh, spoken about too much is Axel Dwork. Dwork, sorry. And uh, he is actually putting in quite a performance for his first go. He's only, uh, what, about 10 seconds behind um, Christopher Green and in sixth position outright. So he started last in the McLaren, no, sorry, the DPs. And uh, with the retirement of Ian Ford, Steve Anus, and also... Um, with the unfortunate accident obviously involving uh, John Amos there as well. Um, inherited three spots, so putting in a solid performance. Hasn't turned it around, so... Very well, well done to Alex. Bit, you might have might been... You might have had a little incident with the... Uh, uh, while well, lapping that McLaren earlier of Parlo. Parlo. Oh, yes, of course. Eight short-term memory problems, that's me. Sorry, dude. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Axel, <to Parlo. laughs> Just having a look at the damage now on John Emerson's car. It looks like it's quite substantial. I don't know how he's uh, still pumping out all 1 minute 13. So must he's actually that. on the same pace as the leader. So Must, um, be, must be that can of talent you guys have in the TTO garages. <laughs> yes, um, he's definitely one of our faster drivers, that's for sure, John. So yeah, so he's still pumping out the same sort of lap time as the leaders. So. Unfortunate accident there for uh, for the two boys there and the DPs and really cost them for a, a very strong result. Looks like is Ian Ford's back on track as well. Just ahead of uh, Emerson. Yeah, a few more laps down. About seven laps down on the leaders. Yeah, that's right. We saw Ian Ford there stuck heavily in the fence there at, uh, at Moss, so would have had to, I imagine, wait a while for his car to get fixed there, but um, you can't miss him on, on screen, can you? That is a very, very bright livery. All the colours of the rainbow. He's just moving over on the main straight, let John Emerson pass I mean, he would have been able to see John Emerson uh, really, really pushing hard. Hinkston. Yeah, Mitch Aperhall pulling himself on the back up to Jonathan Solani, seeming to get that second place back with about 12 minutes to go in the race. Yeah, that's right. Last lap round, um, Mitch Aperhall did a 117.3 as opposed to Jonathan Solani in uh, a 1 minute 17.7. .7. So last time by, close to four tenths of a second. As they uh, cross the start finish line again, we're able to see a new gap another up two, here. Another two tenths back on Jonathan. Oh, I don't know if he's going to have the time to be able to do it. That's about six, seven laps remaining, and uh, it'll be very, very, very close at the end of the race. Gap down to three seconds. Yeah, about that gap down to about two point three seconds. Once Abrahol gets in the gap in the actual draft of uh, Jonathan Solani, it, it may actually, uh, that last second will be a lot easier to reel in. Mitch Abrahol is absolutely ringing this thing. I mean, he's using every millimetre of the track there. You would have seen through much there. He's two wheels up on the ripple strip. He was pushing it very, very hard. Gap now down to 2.1. Dust flying off the, le the left rear there through Moss. With, uh, with about 11 minutes left on the clock now, he will be pushing as hard as possible. Jonathan runs a little bit wide there, coming off uh, the back um, uh, back into the S's there. Under two seconds. 
two and all he can here. A lazy man racing car. Looks like lazy man racing now. David Hingston also pushing the back of Bruce Joy as well. So very, very tightly contested finishing now in the uh, GT3 class. Hingston yeah, last time by would have been about three tenths of a second faster. Ian Ford hit back into pit lane by the looks of it. Uh, just watching Hingston close right up on a tour into Moss there. Yeah, well that gap there has actually been sort of ebbing and flowing over the last five laps. You can see that on the screen there we've got the, uh, the last five gains and losses there. And uh, yeah, it's um, very interesting to see that um, that gap been ebbing and flowing now. And Hingston right in the draft. Coming in the S's now, this right hander is a lot of fun and very, very difficult to get right. So Hingston pressure in the back of Joy, hoping to push Joy into maybe a little bit of a mistake, making Joy go okay, a little bit wide and then benefiting from that. Well, yeah, it's hard to get that little section right. How good is how good is that for you? Looking back off Joy's car, like that is that is a sensational shot. You get to see the uh, the ebbing and flowing of the gap. Back up to April Hall, let's pull it down to about 1.5 seconds at the moment. We have 9 minutes to go. Last time by their laps were... Oh, jeez, nearly a second. You know, that pressure's oh. starting to get to Jonathan a little bit. Too. That's why he's uh, trying to taste the champagne already, so uh, Jonathan just thinks to put his head down, not look at the mirrors, not look at that split and just push like he's never pushed before so it'll be um, five absolute qualifying laps now for Jonathan Solani. Oh, Mitch now under, now back down to about a second behind uh, Jonathan. Mitch making a bit of a liar out of me, just saying that last second probably is going to be nice and easy to gain and he's sort of hovering around that mark. Uh, Jonathan answering back, only about two seconds, two tenths slower than uh, Mitch in the last lap. Will make for a very, very tight finish. The Mitch now reeling in Jonathan Solani. Looks like we've had reports that Carl Watmore has an issue. Oh, we'll have the race recall replay up on screen now. Looks like he's come off at turn two. Carl putting in a great result, unfortunately uh, he, having a big he, mistake. He, looks like he's just grabbed the grass heading into turn two with the right rear and enough to unsettle the car and turn it around and back into the wall. Yeah, just getting right on the back there of Bruce Joy, uh, sorry, about back of Joy there and um, skipping across the track, putting a couple of wheels in the dirt and unfortunately from there you're nothing but a passenger. He's got got a bit of a, um, a lot of damage in the back of that TTR to prototype, but it looks like we've got... Hingston sneaking. <laughs> wow. So while we're on that replay there, move was made. Replay up on screen now. Looks like he's got uh, a very good run out of Moss there. Stuck in the draft and was managed to get it past going into the S's. Yeah, all that, that was all brought about early, from the early little incident with Cal. Wow, that is a brave move around the outside. He's got to take the road pills to go through there. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. You're not wrong. You're not wrong there at all. But uh, you have total faith in the guy that you're overtaking to uh, to do the right thing on the inside. And um, the move was made and was done very at, clean. Still looking at this back battle with Aberhaw. 
Now down to point eight of a second. Battle for second is on. Oh, Ian Ford steps out in front of Solani. That'll that'll slow him down, and that'll give Abrahol the um, the gap that he needs. Both of them had to deal with a faster car. Um, Emerson coming to pass them that lap and slowed them down just that little bit. Now about 0.6 of a second. We get the five minute bell ringing in our ear now. We've got Mitch Aberhol pressure in the back of Jonathan Solani. Oh, look how good Mitch Aberhol is on the brakes. He is all over the back of Jonathan now. That is incredible. How good is that shot? That was awesome. <laughs> My. That is sensational to see. He's in the draft now. Jonathan will make Mitch go around the long way. Oh, they get very, very close going into the S's. Mitch sticks the outside. Oh, contact! Oh, no, they've come Mitch together. around and Jonathan around as well. Both managed to keep it off the wall. Abrahol gets it going on track first, so move made there on the outside of Jonathan Solani, but um, Solani back going. <coughs> Hingston gets through as well. Just excuse me there, the excitement. Made my made my uh, throatage. That's <laughs> them. Them lazy man racing cars got me again. So Jonathan dropping two spots there in that incident. It was a big move by Abrahol. Yeah, that was um, like you said. It, it takes a brave man to go around the outside there, heading into uh, heading into the S's and too close for comfort there, unfortunately. Yeah, just. Wait, I'm um, just trying to find an incident maybe involving um, Bruce Joy. He's slowed quite immensely there. Yeah, he's um, quite heavily damaged there in the in the back of that McLaren. So looks like he actually got spun around in the main straight. Oh, Hugh, he backed it into the wall in a big way. Very unfortunate there for Bruce Joy, following the back of David big... Arnold. Like he's done it all himself. Just a bit off the, off the last turn and just backed through into the fence. Damage in the, the car. Oh, that, oh, that's a yeah, that's a very big hit. Um, unfortunately, there for Bruce. I mean, it's just a reminder how how these guys drive on the absolute limit all the time. So, unfortunately, there, Bruce Joy, McLaren has bit him hard. Lazy Man Racing now in P's two and three in the McLaren. And one man we haven't spoke about, Dylan Sharman, absolutely out to a commanding lead, 35 and a half seconds. Sensational lead now from from uh, Dylan Sharman, putting in a That's almost performance. half a lap. Almost half a lap for the lead. That's amazing. That's incredible, isn't it? When you put it in those sort of terms, I mean that is that is a monster of a lead. And also in the Daytona prototypes, Christopher Osborne out to a mammoth lead over Nishi as well, 34 seconds. So um, the two leaders of the two different classes putting in a an absolute masterclass. Really keeping their cars nice and straight, staying out of trouble. Really putting on a bit of a show, saying, hey boys, this is how you do it. Catch me, catch me in round six. We look at uh, Nishi now in second place. Got a bit of a lead on one Shea as well. These guys have kept their cars pretty clean as well. Not too many accidents, not too many uh, contact involved with those guys. So these guys really, really benefiting from the attrition that we found with the close racing here at Mosport. Yeah, Nishi, Nishi pulling, putting on a hell of a performance for his first, first night in the top split here. 
Yeah, I'd, um, I'd be quite impressed with myself walking away with a um, second overall. That would, I tell you, that would be um, an absolute. I'd be over the moon. I reckon. Yeah, season to a season probably like Christopher Osborne. Does Forty-five. A yeah, about 40 seconds to go now. Just trying to find the leader now. We've got... Uh, so we're about to get into the last lap. So heading around the uh, the last turn now. He'll grab the white flag. With about... Oh, geez, that was close. Yeah, 20 odd seconds to go. So this will be the last lap. Christopher Osborne there will make no mistakes. He'll take his time getting around Mitch Arbor Hall. I'm sure Mitch will see see um, Christopher Osborne in his mirrors and make plenty of room as he does. Getting on the brakes nice and early. Christopher Osborne staying off the kerbs, not wanting to make a mistake and seeing his um, the race that he, he absolutely deserves to win go by the wayside. Heading now onto the Mario Andretti straight away. Long climb up this hill too. Long climb. Only a couple of corners to go for Chris here. About to take out round five at Mossport. Canadian, Canadian tyre uh, Mossport Park. Yep. The checker flag up there ready. Christopher Osborne absolutely over the moon. Wins round five here at Canadian, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Epic, epic show from him. And uh, in second place, Mitch Habra Hall and David Hingston, Lazy Man Racing, finishing the McLaren in, in um, second and third in class. Now we try and follow back to, uh, back to Nishi, who's... There he is, just about 40 seconds behind now, coming through the second to last corner. He'll be over the moon with this result. Well done to Dale Niche, keeps his car straight and uh, takes out second overall. Sharman and McLaren are about to take the victory. So Two Dylan in a row for him. Yeah, Dylan Sharman, absolute huge speed there. Well done to Dylan, takes out round five. Now we have an all all the cars come across. Christopher Green, good performance there, taking fourth. A man, a man we barely spoke about the whole broadcast does quite well. Finishes 55 seconds behind our leader, but um, on the on the same lap. So well done to Christopher Green. He yeah, kept out of trouble. And... Well, geez, that had everything in at that race. Um, I think um, it'll be taking me a couple, couple of hours to get over this one, that's for sure. Yeah, they're throwing all, everything at us. Throwing everything at us, the, these guys. Yeah, that's exactly right. Results up on screen now. We've got Christopher Osborne and the Bits Racing Daytona prototype taking out the win. 39 laps uh, in second place. Quite a fair chunk behind. 38.8 seconds behind. Dale Neesh in second benefit from a lot of mistakes from other drivers so well done Dale. Michael Shayer in third, Christopher Osborne in fourth, Alex Dwarak in fifth place, Carl Watmore three laps down after that accident unfortunately taking home sixth place. John Emerson huge damage in that uh, TTL DP as well. Ian Ford in eighth, eight laps down and Steve Vanus with a massive DNF and that will hurt his championship to no end. Yeah, over to the uh, GT3s, we've got Dylan Sharman taking the win on 36 laps from Mitchell Abrahor, David Hingston, Jonathan Solani, David Arnold, Bruce Joy, Benjamin Allen, Warren Spack, Daniel Pelzer, Manu, over the page we've got out some DNS in Palo, Fabio, Andrew Lee and Tony Ostrich who are all involved in that first lap collision. That These guys, that's um, DNF, they are huge players in this championship. So Fabio Gonzalez, Andrew Lee and obviously Tony Ostrich, very, very, very fast drivers caught in a first lap incident that could alter the championship.
Well, um, well, Scotty, mate, that had absolutely everything. This this round was one to remember for sure. There's um, controversy, close racing, epic battles, and, and I tell you, plenty of action. That race call replay button, I bet, got pressed heaps of times. And so um, I really enjoyed that. It was uh, probably probably one of the one of the better races I've seen. One of the closer races in the in the mid pack, battling to and fro there as well. Yeah, they're giving us good, good show. The McLaren guys as well, the, D, the DP guys, taking them back to the workshops and getting ready for next week. Yeah, that's right. These guys will be putting on with the hoist, give them a good overhaul for uh, Mazda Laguna Seca. So that's uh, one of the drivers' favourites. Um, he usually provides really good clean racing, um, and of course, it's the home of that famous curve, the uh, the corkscrew chicane. Um, yeah, plenty of undulations, you, pitch rest, little track that one. It gives you some nightmares, but before that, we head over to uh, YouTube and then and then our first broadcast for on uh, for the V8s on Monday night from uh, Interlagos. Yep, tune in from seven thirty. You'll get to see the the pre-show. Someone do a um, a hot lap. You'll get to see um, the qualifying, and you'll also get to see the the race there from uh, from seven thirty. Tune in, guys. Don't be late. It's a um and a great show when we do get to see uh get to hear Jay and Sandman do their thing. And if you want to find a not so, a quite quick way to get around into Lagos, head to the V8s online YouTube channel and see Maddie's hot lap around there for this week. <laughs> Wasn't too fast. One of the one of the one of my laps, one of the average sort of uh, race laps there, guys. So. Yeah, jump over there, check out, uh, have a look through a bit of a history as well. And don't forget as well, Wednesday Night Trucks, that'll be broadcasting yeah. as well on YouTube. So those guys will be getting used to that as well. Yeah, back, back at Iowa this week. Oh, that's a fun track too. With, with Desi and Brooksy um, in the chair. Yeah, those guys have been putting on a, a good show for us lately and, and the tracks are always a nice clean battle, a nice, uh, nice battle pack as well. These guys race at... You know, within 200 mile an hour, very, very, very close to each other. So great racing, really good fun. So um, guys, don't forget, tune in the trucks as well on Wednesday nights. Also, last chance to get into race, reality, race to Reality final next Wednesday night. Oh, how could you forget that? Following the trucks, guys. Jump on there. It's um, one great show. You haven't got your seat yet? Make sure you book in at the Facebook page, which is uh, www.facebook.com forward slash facts online. Head over there, book your seat, and um, see you on the track. Yeah, like last last week, you become a fan and ch check it out, and we'll be looking to give away a few seats to the that final round at VIR. Oh, that's a great track too. So plenty of action coming up, guys, on VIR online. Well, Scotty. About time to sign off, mate. Um, really enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next week for sure. No worries, mate. Well, I'll be back then. We'll leave the studio nice and tidy for the boys for Monday night. Ah, they don't clean up for us, mate. Why well, we should clean up for them. Well, guys, you've been watching uh, round five of Grand Am Thursday night. Thanks to Track Racer, Thrustbuster, and Vatiline Superstore. I'm Matty Hill, your host. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.